talk to you today about learning TypeScript the hard way. Uh, what does that mean? Um, so this means building a type-safe polymorphic React component, and I'll get into what all those words mean in a second. Uh, but first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Adam. I'm a senior UI engineer at MongoDB, working on the leafy green UI, uh, UI library and design system. Uh, and it powers the UI for pretty much all of MongoDB's apps. Um, grew up just outside Toronto, Ontario. I've lived in New York for about six years now. And yes, I am a hockey fan. Uh, and yes, I am a little disappointed that it's the Utah hockey team. Come on, you can be a little more creative. Anyway, let's talk about learning TypeScript the hard way. So as I mentioned, I work on MongoDB's uh, UI library. And a component I recently had to build um, was a, well, a polymorphic type safe React component. Um, and I got really into the weeds in TypeScript and TypeScript with React. So hopefully we all know what, uh, so that's what I want to talk, to talk about today. And hopefully we can learn some things about TypeScript along the way. But what the heck does this mean? Hopefully we all know what a React component means. Um, but what does it mean to be type safe and polymorphic? So to start, type safe essentially just means to be leveraging TypeScript in a way that you know, makes sense and limits and prevents mistakes. So what, if, what is TypeScript? I didn't see everybody's hand there. Um, so what is TypeScript? Essentially, TypeScript is just JavaScript with types. Um, that is directly taken from their website. Um, and why use TypeScript? If you're not sold on it yet, uh, let me give you a couple reasons why I find it personally invaluable in my work. TypeScript, in my experience, is the best way to catch just really silly bugs. Let's say you have uh, this object called user, and we try to access a name property. With just JavaScript, this would log undefined. And if your code is any more complex, you might be left debugging this for several minutes, some, several hours, or even a couple days, wondering why it, this user's name is not defined. Did the data not come back from the server properly? Did I not call set state in the right place at the right time? You get the idea. But with TypeScript, we can see right away that there is no property called name, and we probably made a silly mistake somewhere. You can also see here uh, that the type of user is inferred from where we declared it. If we're creating multiple users, we can actually, uh, we multiple users with the same properties, we can actually use this to define an interface. And this brings me to the next great thing about TypeScript is that it makes things unpredictable. Should I pause? Should I stall? What's going on? Um, yeah, so I don't know how to stall without the, uh, the, the slides up there. Um, so yeah, TypeScript lets us define types. My mic on. Ah, oh, there we go. Hi, Adam. Hey. This must be very nerve-wracking for you. It's a little weird. But you know what? We yeah. can. It's fine. The, the crowd is so supportive. They love you, right? Yeah. It's all good. We. It's going to be a great talk. Ask this happens like yeah. all the time. All the time. In fact, the best talks are improvised ones. Would you? Agree? Oh, look, they're back. There we go. Interface user. All right. Hey, give him a huge round of applause and pay attention. Let's go. Thank Let's you. Go. Woo! Woo! All right. So, um, ironically, um, <laughs> we weren't using TypeScript here. Um, so TypeScript makes things consistent and predictable. Let's say that we have a function here that takes some user object as a property. 
um, and returns a parsed uh, full name. This might be fine in some small context, um, but really, in this context of this function, we have no idea what user might be. It could be a string, it could be a number, it could be anything. Uh, so by defining this user interface, uh, not to be confused with a user interface, uh, we, can, uh, we create a contract, in a sense, uh, that says that this function will always receive the data that is in this shape. And if we try to say, at a middle initial, TypeScript will say that, will warn us that this user doesn't have, this user object doesn't have this property. And I'll get into TypeScript a little bit deeper in a moment, but I want to talk about this other scary word. What is polymorphic? So polymorphic is a concept that essentially means that one thing can be used in multiple different ways. It comes from Greek, I believe. Uh, that means something can be in many forms or many shapes. And in computer science, it means that something can be different types at different times. In React, this means that it's a component that can be rendered as multiple different HTML elements or components. So let's imagine we're building a UI library. We have this button that renders a button element. This is great when all you want is a button, but sometimes you want to render something that looks like a button, but with semantic HTML, something with Remix, something with Next.js, React Router, whatever router that Dev worked on. So we need button to be polymorphic. We need button to be rendered as something else. So let's take a stab at building our simple polymorphic component with TypeScript. Let's go back to what we had before and add some TypeScript to this. We start by creating a simple interface for our button props. And then, this, so this lets us know what our button component expects to be passed in. And now that we have this, we can tell button what types it's going to be expecting. So let's make this polymorphic. Let's take that same interface that we had and add an as prop. Here we say that the as prop can be either a button or an anchor tag. And then we can tell it that it can accept both the button props and the anchor props. Now, some more experienced TypeScript users might be squirming here a little bit. Uh, since there's a better way to do this, going back to the basic button props interface that we had, um, this is by no means all of the props that a button can accept, right? There's all of these event handlers, these, all, all of these different attributes. Fortunately, React doesn't force us to list these every time and gives us some nice, uh, some nice types built in out of the box. So here we can leverage TypeScript's interface extension. So we say button props extends the buttons component props uh, and make this, this cleans up really nicely. So now we take our uh, polymorphic button props and rewrite it like this. So now we accept both button props and anchor props and we create this custom as prop. We can now rewrite our button prop to make use of this as prop and render whatever component we have. Remember that uh, JSX needs components to be uppercase, so we can't just say as is the component, because that'll think it's some weird HTML element which doesn't exist. So this is basically a polymorphic button. It can only be two things, but it's a polymorphic button. We can use it like this, and we can say a button is actually a link which with this href. But we could also write something like this. We could say it's a button that has an href. Or we can say it's a, an anchor tag, but it's disabled, which isn't actually a property that an anchor tag accepts. We'd love TypeScript to warn us that this is wrong. Like I said, TypeScript makes things predictable, makes things, it make, it helps you catch really silly bugs. So to do this, we can use this TypeScript feature called the discriminated union. You can think of a discriminated union kind of like TypeScript's way of implementing a switch statement. 
Let's take a, this, a look at this example that I stole from the TypeScript documentation. Here we have an interface uh, called shape that can either be a circle, a square, or a triangle. We can then pass this into some function called calculate area. And with this function, we can, we can have a switch statement that changes how we calculate the area based on the kind. But in this example, we'll get a TypeScript error that says shape.radius can be undefined, or length or height can all be undefined. This is because TypeScript in each of these uh, switch cases doesn't actually know what type shape is and that it's going to have, definitely going to have a radius. So how do we tell TypeScript that this is what we want? This is where uh, we use a discriminated union. So we do this by defining three separate interfaces and combining them into one type. So here, if a, uh, we know kind is circle, we know for sure this shape is going to have a radius. Square has a length and so on. So now TypeScript will know in this switch statement that because shape.kind is a circle, it will have, it will for sure have a radius and won't throw this error message. Obviously, if we tried to reference shape.length in this first uh, switch case, that would throw an error, which is what we want. So let's apply this to our polymorphic component. We want to tell TypeScript that when a component accepts our polymorphic button props, it should accept either a button or anchor props, not both. So we can rewrite this prop using a discriminated union. So this tells TypeScript that when we have, an, when our as prop is defined as a button, then the rest of the props should extend from component props button. Uh, and the same thing with, with our anchor. So now, when we try to pass the wrong props into our button uh, React component, we get the expected React errors. There's still a couple problems with this, though. Like, we only support buttons and links. We could just keep writing every HTML element we think of until we're satisfied with everything that button could possibly be but there's always just one more, and there's always just one more routing library. Let's say we want our library wants to support Next and Remix and React Router and anything else. We have to have dependencies on all of these things and import them into our button component. So here we actually, just to take a look at this TypeScript, we import our Next link and our Remix links and say if our as prop is explicitly defined as the type of a next link, then we extend the components of a next link. It's complicated TypeScript here. And you've probably heard the term in programming, just don't repeat yourself. So how do we make this more dry? We need to take this very repetitive TypeScript and make it generic. You can think of generics kind of like TypeScript's function parameters. It allows you to pass something in to types and expect something, uh, something predictable back. If you've ever typed an array of strings, you've used a generic type. Here we tell uh, TypeScript that my array is going to be some type of, or some, an array of some type, in this case, a string. Oh, it's over here. Uh, yeah, so here we tell, we, we pass in a string to these little pointy boys and we tell Array that it's, it's going to be a string. So there are really two flavors of, uh, of TypeScript generics. There's generic uh, JavaScript values, things that are in JavaScript land uh, whose inputs and outputs can change. These are JavaScript values. Uh, and there are also generic types. These are things that only accept, uh, exist in TypeScript. And once we get to JavaScript land, these things are kind of forgotten about. This only helps us in, in compiling and, and writing code. So in my mind, the best way to understand generics is with a function. Let's consider some function that accepts an array and returns the last element in this array. Here we tell TypeScript that we expect one type parameter t and that our function will accept an array of that type that we declared and will return a single element of that same type. So we, we can guarantee that the array that we pass in is going to be the same uh, as the return type. 
One thing I want to note here, because someone called me out before, is don't do this. Don't call your types T, because that's bad. Use better names. <laughs> I didn't have room on my slides to change this to something more meaningful. Um, but yeah, don't use T as your type name. You can be more creative than that. So when we call this function, we can pass some type into those, those uh, angle brackets, those pointy boys, and expect that last string is going to be a string and that the uh, last number is going to be a number. And some nice syntax trigger here in TypeScript. We don't actually need to pass anything into that type because we use that type in our function declaration. So here, last string, we don't actually need to tell it that it's going to be strings because that's inferred by the array we pass in. Last number is going to be a number. And here, our last thing is going to be some union of, it's going to be either a string, a number, or a Boolean. We also have generic types. So here we can create some interface that we use to track our current selection, uh, and then an, also an array of all possible selections of that same type. Um, so we can use that to track things like the names of speakers. So here we have an array of the speakers and the current speaker. That's, that would be me. We can also keep track of something of some other type, something like the currently focused DOM element. I don't know why you would do it like this, but you can. You can also do things like narrow the type in an interface. So here, instead of just any old type that could be a string, could be an HTML element, we explicitly say that our selected element is going to extend the built-in type HTML element. So it must satisfy this type constraint. So this is going to be helpful later on when we build our generic polymorphic component. So finally, we can put all of these, we can put generic functions and generic types together. And because React components are just functions now, after 18, I think, we can make a generic React component. So let's imagine we're building a select component that can either be a single select or a multi-select. First, we'll define the props interface here, which takes generic parameter m, which is going to be either multi-select yes or multi-select no. Um, and then we can assign that type to uh, our multi-select, and then we have this kind of crazy looking thing on value, and I'll get, I'll get into that in a second. We can then uh, replicate what we had for our generic function and make a generic component. So here our select component uh, is a function that accepts a generic parameter m, passes that into our select props type, and then renders and returns some JSX. One little gotcha here for writing TypeScript in components is that if you type a component, uh, you have to use this extend syntax or write a kind of arbitrary comma because these angle brackets in a TypeScript or a TSX file have two different meanings. They could be type or they could be just actually a React component. So React thinks you're trying to render a React component there, so you have to use type, ex make it explicit that you're using TypeScript here. So now we can take our select component and use it like this. So here, when multi-select is true, we accept a, an array of values. When multi-select is false, we can accept only one value. And when we say multi-select is true and we try to pass in only one value, we get a TypeScript error. But how does this work? I said I'd get back into that value thing. Um, going back into this type definition, we have this thing called a conditional type. So here we have this M type that comes into select props, and we use that to do this weird looking thing in value. So this is called a conditional type, which you can think of kind of like TypeScript's ternary operator or if else statement. So a conditional type follows the ternary syntax, something like if some type extends some other type or satisfies the requirements, then my type is assigned to type if true, otherwise type if false. And this looks like something like this in practice, where we have some type name or ID that accepts either a string or a number and will be assigned to 
uh, some interface with an ID if a number is passed in, or some interface with a string if a string is passed in. And you can make this as complicated as you want. I'm not saying that's good code to have like a five layer ternary operator, but you can if you want. So in our select component, this means that if the type that is provided to the props interface is true, then we can accept the prop value, uh, then we accept the prop value that is an array of strings. Otherwise, it's just a single string. And now let's break this down a little bit more. Remember, JSX is really just a fancy function call to react.create element. So the equivalent in um, not JSX would be something like this, uh, where we create my props that is of type select props with the true type, multi select is true, and value is this array. But careful here, one thing that really confused me is. There's the type literal, which is in TypeScript land. This is the type true, and there's also the value that gets assigned to multi-select. That's the JavaScript value. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is which values are in just TypeScript, which values are in just JavaScript. As you use this more, this is probably the more complicated uh, case of this because it's exactly the same. But there are types that can be only one type, and there's JavaScript values. So let's dive back into our polymorphic component and make a generic polymorphic component. So here's what we had when we last looked at this. Taking what we learned from generics, we can simplify this almost infinite lines of code into something like this. Instead of listing all possible HTML elements that a button can be and any other React components that this button can be, we can take some generic type T uh, and is, that is used in our as prop and pass that in. But here, t could be anything, like a string or an object, which is not what we want. We want a restrictor type to only React components, which React has this really nice built-in type, react.element type. This means anything that is built into HTML. In this case, buttons, anchors, divs, list items, whatever. And it also means any other component type. So then we update our polymorphic component uh, and make sure that that is generic as well. So here we take, take in some generic type T that is going to be a React element type and pass that into our polymorphic button props. Then we take this component and render that component. And there we have it. <clears throat> this is a fully polymorphic type safe React component. We can pull in a remix link. We can pull in any component we want pass that into our as prop, and it's going to work. It's going to render a remix link here that, render, that goes to React Rally. Uh, we have this like and subscribe button that's actually going to be rendered as a button, and it's going to handle a click. But this is really just the tip of the iceberg, and I don't have enough time to talk about the rest of it. Um, we can make a reusable component factory. Let's say I work on a UI library. I want any of our components to be polymorphic. Uh, that's a whole other talk, and I don't have enough time to get into that. But today we've learned TypeScript the hard way. There's, there's kind of a lot of stuff that we, that we touched on here. We talked about polymorphism, interfaces, some built-in React types, interface extension, some type literals, uh, discriminated unions, conditional types, and generics. So how's that for learning TypeScript the hard way? I've been Adam Thompson. Uh, for references, you can take a look at our leafy green uh, GitHub repo. And we are actually hiring a director. So come talk to me afterwards if you think you want to be my boss's boss. Thanks.